Okay, so this is the part. This is the part. This isn't my usual spot, as you can probably tell if you've watched a few of these. You know this isn't my usual spot. So let's go find it over here, whether this is actually working, because that is my big concern at the moment. Is this working? Is this working? Oh, it, appre it appears to be working. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute this over here. And, um, you know, that's one of the downsides. I'm not seeing the feed. There it is. There it is, Damon I. The feed is on, and I apologize for messing this up. Okay, so here's here's the story. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to explain things here before I before I get going. Okay, right now, first of all, I should probably pour myself a glass of wine because that's kind of the benefit of doing this, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna pour myself some wine. You know, I have a horrible feeling this is the same wine that I was drinking last week. Um, I do like this one. This is actually one of my favorites. It's a Hardy's Rieslinger Witzstraminer. And uh, see, I'm pretty sure this is the one I was drinking last week. If you were here last week, let me know. Is this what I was drinking last week? I think this is what I was drinking last week. So here's the scoop. Um, upstairs right now, where I usually do the show from, is the cat. cat. My cat's going to go and check out my wine here. I don't think cats actually like wine. So here's the scoop. Normally, I'm in a better position to do this. Now I'm sitting on the floor in the basement on the table because upstairs there are people putting in carpeting. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm down here while people are putting in carpeting. Anyway, so so it's it might be a little bit weird. So here, hey, let's do the introduction, shall we? Let's do the official introduction. Are you ready? Okay, ooh, that's right. To do the introduction, I have to do this and I have to do this and then I'm going to do this. Okay, all right. So, so I, I know that uh, you know you probably want me to be talking about what happened with GitHub. Microsoft bought GitHub. Did you hear about that? Seven point five billion dollars for a company that basically has no revenue. Like, as in, they haven't made any money. Um, I know they take in money because you know, obviously, people like even me, for instance, I have a GitHub account that I pay I don't know six bucks a month for or something like that. And um, so obviously they do take in money, but uh, they haven't really made any money in the entire time. And yet they just got bought out by Microsoft for $7.5 billion. That's with a B, by the way. And um, there's a lot of talk as to whether this is a good or a bad thing. I know that on Linux Journal. Um, and uh, oh, I, I would be remiss. I would be remiss. At the, the opening sequence actually does say, you know, Linux Journal. But uh, thanks to Linux Journal for supporting Cooking with Linux Without a Net. Um, I love you guys. I really do. I always have. You know, it's, we, we've, we've, we've been together a long time and I still love you guys. Anyway. So there's a lot of talk, and in fact, if you're worried about your project on GitHub, you can go to linuxjournal.com, and in fact, I'm going to switch off my camera, and I'm going to show you this stuff in just a second, but you can go to linuxjournal.com, and uh, they have some, they have some um, things happening fast and furious in the background, as I happen to know, and uh, they're going to be chatting about how it is that you can move your project from GitHub to GitLab, assuming, of course, you want to do that. So here's the big question. What do I think about that? Um, because, you know, I have to take a stand on this, I think. And I'm not sure that Microsoft is necessarily being evil with this. Uh, if you believe my friend Stephen J. Vaughn Nichols, he says that Microsoft basically looked at, that Microsoft is basically one of the biggest users of GitHub. And uh, what they did was they looked at the bottom line on how much money they were spending on uh, storing projects on GitHub because as it turns out, Microsoft does have an awful lot of open source projects on the go, as, as, as it turns out. And uh, they decided that uh, even at $7.5 billion, this would be a good deal if they just bought GitHub as opposed to continuing to you know, buy its services on a monthly basis. At least that's part of the uh, reasoning behind it. And, um, and Microsoft has been going out of its way to show the open source world that they're a good open source community member all these years. And... Um, do I believe them? I'm not sure that that actually enters into it at the moment. Uh, I'll let everybody out there try to figure that out on their own. But uh, the bottom line is that um, I think the optics are bad. I mean, for years, I mean, these are no longer the Balmer, you know, the Steve Balmer, you know, Microsoft is a, or sorry, Linux is a cancer and we must destroy it. This is no longer those years. I mean, this isn't happening anymore. But that doesn't change the fact that the, um, the optics are bad. It does look for all the world like Microsoft coming in, swooping up, you know, this, the greatest, you know, the biggest library of open source projects in the world, you know, embracing, extending, and uh, what's the final E? 
extinguishing, you know, and there's still a lot of fear. And that's, uh, you know, in large part, thanks to, you know, the Balmer years over at uh, Microsoft. Anyway, that's the last thing I'm going to say on that for the moment. Keep your eyes on LinuxJournal.com because there will be a lot over the next few days. Uh, there's stuff now, but there will be a lot more over the next few days related to GitHub and, uh, you know, how developers can respond to this if they feel that they need to respond to this. So I'm going to shut down the, uh, the screen here and uh, I'm going to make myself disappear. So bye. I'm disappearing for the moment. And um, hey, listen to all of you out there. Cheers. I thank you as well for being here. All right. So I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make me disappear. There we go. I believe I've disappeared. If I've done this right, I've disappeared. And um, and uh, I want to direct you to I hope this is a screen. Look at this. OK, this is just this is just a, a brief clip. Hopefully I won't get in trouble for this. <laughs> George Powell's version of the time machine 1960. This is a great movie. Great movie. There we go. And uh, there are a lot of clocks in this movie, as, uh, as you can imagine. In fact, I was looking for the opening sequence of this. There he is in his time machine, uh, you know, watching what's happening, a snail racing across the floor. This is a great movie. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should you should go find this thing. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's on Netflix, or, but it's got to be on something somewhere. Certainly on um, um, certainly uh, somebody has got this thing. But it's it's a great movie, the George 1960 George Powell version of the Time Machine. Anyway, at the opening sequence of the Time Machine, there are all these clocks. There are clocks absolutely everywhere. The place is lined with clocks. And I thought we would start out today by breaking time, or not really breaking time, but looking at all sorts of cool clock things. And I'm going to start with my uh, with my desktop here. And on my desktop, Stuart, Stuart, glad to have you here, Stuart, Damon, I. Thanks, guys, for being here. Cheers. I'm going to have a little drink to you both here. I know you guys are thinking I've got, I'll take any excuse for a drink. Sandy, Sandy, glad to have you here as well. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to have a drink to you too. <laughs> okay. So I've got, as you can see, like we all have clocks I mean, there are clocks everywhere you go, but some clocks are still kind of fun. Okay. And um, we're going to start out today by just doing a, a, a run through of different clock types. And I'm gonna start off with, you've got your little basic clock in the corner here, which has got a calendar that pops up. This is obviously on the KDE desktop, uh, which, you know, as it's no big surprise to a lot of you, this is my favorite desktop. But um, there are some widgets that you can install um, in the KDE desktop. If I go add widget and then I do a search on clock, um, there will be all sorts of interesting clock. Let's see. Does my timekeeper work on this one? I haven't tried. Oh, there it is. Now that, my friends, is a clock, right? That is a clock. Let's, uh, let's move that one around the screen a little bit. There we go. That is a very cool clock. So there you go. This is kind of a steampunk sort of clock uh, that uh, you can get from the... From the, uh, from the uh, you'll have to actually have to download it. Like if you actually go over here to where it says uh, add widgets, you're not gonna find it by default in the list of widgets. You're gonna have to go down here where it says get new widgets. You're gonna have to go download new plasma widgets. And then you're gonna do a search for something called Timekeeper. This thing is actually called Timekeeper. Uh, is that what it's called? No, Timekeeper, there it is. This is the one, Timekeeper. I love this thing. This is actually one of my favorite widgets of all time. Um, and like I said, very steampunky sort of thing happening. And um, let's, uh, and, and of course you, you, can, you can click this one over here and the thing just sort of disappears into itself or pops right back out. This thing is just beautiful. And of course it tracks, it tracks the position of the earth and the moon around the earth, the phase of the moon, um, you know, the months. Uh, this is like the all encompassing, super fantastic widget. I love this thing. Over here, we have what's called the, this is also from the plasma stuff. This is the digital clock. This is obviously a little bit more, um, you know, sane, if you want to use that term. And uh, we can change the appearance of that in some ways by basically, uh, like, for instance, we can say, uh, let me see, I don't want to show the date, for instance. So if I go apply, the date doesn't appear and we've got just a clock or if for whatever reason, and I can't come up with a really good reason why you would want to do that, but you can just go to, um, you know, a 12 hour clock. Um, and at that point I would go apply and now it actually says PM. If I go to a 24 hour clock and I go apply, the PM disappears, obviously. And obviously, of course, 12, 17 PM is 12, 17 PM, regardless of whether we're using a 24 hour clock or a um, <clears throat> 12 hour clock. So let's go ahead and put the date back in there. And, um, 
And then over here we have the binary clock. I have to confess that years and years ago, I actually built myself a binary clock using LEDs from a place called Radio Shack. Some of you kids won't know what I'm talking about, but, uh, but yeah, I built this thing from Radio Shack. Anyway, so there we go. So now the binary clock, let's see what kind of things we can do on there. Use custom colors for LEDs, inactive LEDs, uh, custom color for grid, let's apply that. There you go. Then we've got like a, a you know, a very display seconds. We're already displaying the seconds on there. Hours, minutes, seconds, six of them. Get it, get it. And uh, let me see, it's, uh, it's 04, 5, 6, there you go. See, it's all working. Uh, let's go, let's not use a color for inactive uh, and let's just go apply. There we go, the inactive ones. Uh, custom color for inactive LEDs. Let's just make, let's make this one red which is really gonna mess things up for, for a moment here. And I'm gonna go okay. And then I'm gonna make this one here uh, just black. Okay, so inactive is gonna be black. I'm gonna go apply. And there you go. That way it's a little bit more, you know, it's, it makes a little bit more sense in terms of trying to figure out what's actually happening there. First computer was a TRS from Radio Shack 1979. So Stuart is old enough to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if anybody else wants to admit to that. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to do that. Oh, TRS from Radio Shack. Yes, that's right. Radio Shack. I had a TRS-80. I also had a Commodore PET and a Commodore 64 and a Commodore 128 and all sorts of other things I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to mention here. All right, so there we go. So we've got our binary clock. This one down here is actually one of my favorites because it's like... You know the song by Chicago, does anybody really know what time it is? You know that song by, does anybody really know what time? I'm not going to sing for you because, um, well, I'm just not. <laughs> now we can change a couple of things like uh, we can go, uh, you know, bold and italic if you want to go with something like that. I don't think this really works in italic, so I'm going to go apply. But this is fun. So this is like the basic fuzziness, 20 past 12, but we can increase the level of fuzziness on this thing by saying like, for instance, let's go up a level and go apply. Now it's a quarter past 12, see? Okay, so if we wanna get more accurate, it's 20 past 12. If we wanna get a little bit more fuzzy, now it's quarter past 12. Let's increase the level of fuzziness. And now all of a sudden it is lunch. <laughs> it's lunch, it's that simple. You wanna know what time it is? It's lunchtime, apply, let's go, it's noon. And let's go to the ultimate highest level of fuzziness and let's see what that gives us. It's the middle of the week. <laughs> it's not quite the middle. Well, I don't know. Depends on where you count from and where you, how you define the middle, I suppose. But that's, that's insanely fuzzy at that point. Um, I, I tend to like to keep, you know, unless you want time to move really, really slow, not like in George Powell's time machine. If you want it to move really, really slow, then, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is where you're going to want to be. But let's go back to 20 past 12 because that's a level of fuzziness that I'm kind of happy with. So there we go. So this is our timekeeper. This is the digital clock. These are all plasma widgets. This is our, this is our, our binary clock. And this is what's called the fuzzy clock. So let me show you some other ones that, um, that are, you know, for any distribution for that matter. So let's go with AR, um, no, XAR. Let's go with XAR clock. This is like just a basic X clock except that the... Um, the uh, digits have been re reversed. Oh, sorry, the uh, the colors have been reversed on it. So it's kind of a basic one. There are things that you can change at the command line. So if I wanted to go down to the command line here and uh, let's open up another tab here. Um, I could go X, sorry. I have to click in here. A man, X, A, R, clock. And we could change like the, the color of it and, you know, other things. Um, you know, whether we're doing analog, digital, and so forth. So this is like a basic X clock from, you know, minimalist sort of X clock from the days. Um, the other one, which is kind of interesting, which is also an X, you know, from the old X days, is also one of my favorite ones. I, I you know, I have to admit, uh, I have always loved this one. X Dali clock. You know who Salvador Dali is? Salvador Dali, Dali of course, is the, uh, is the artist who is famous for doing all the, the paintings of the melting clocks, you know, the melting clocks draped on top. And uh, let me see, let's go um, images.google.com and uh, we want uh, dolly clocks. 
in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. There we go. There we go. There's, there's the dolly clocks, okay? Like the clocks melting, you know, leaning over top of things and melting. All right, that's, that's the image that I'm talking about here. So if we go back down here and we've got the X dolly clock, it's just digits melting into each other. So you've got the passage of time. Now, of course, we can modify that for 12, 24 hour time, other things as well. It's all command line stuff if we want to change it. But uh, we've got these lovely little melting digits. And of course, the color, as you can tell, also fades in and out. So not only do we have the digits melting one into each other, but we've got colors melting one into each other. So if you're uh, if you are from the 60s and, uh, you know, you're I don't know, uh, or you're from the, uh, you know, or you're you from the current days and you're, you know, testing out some kind of psychedelics. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not judging, by the way, I'm not judging at all. This might be the clock for you because you can watch that while you're tripping. And I, by the way, this is not an endorsement of drugs in any way, shape or form to make that clear. But like I said, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. And for the record. I've never done drugs, except alcohol. I do alcohol and caffeine. I do caffeine on a regular basis, but I digress. So let's take a look at another one, okay? Let's take a look at another one. And uh, this one is a little bit, uh, let me see, alt. Uh, actually, let's do this one from the command line, okay? Because I want to do this one from the command line. So I'm going to open up, um, -da -da, let's clear that. And this one is called D time, okay? Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, D clock, sorry. D C L O C K. That's what I'm doing. There we go. D clock, digital clock. Now, this one is neat because, uh, actually, let me, uh, let me stop that for a second. And I'm going to start it with an Alt F2. And I go D C L O C K. And I'm going to start it like that. And I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm going to expand it so you get a better look at it. But uh, this one will respond on the fly to what you're doing. And if I go. Um, this, yeah, I'm, I'm messing it up here. But if I go man, D clock, see, there are all these things while the clock is running, you can toggle all these different looks on it. So uh, R for reverse video. So I can, you know, so we can reverse the video on it. Uh, we can activate or deactivate the seconds display. Um, if we use the forward slash, see the forward slash here, I can change the angle of the digits to the point that uh, it really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But then I can do the uh, backslash and I can change the angle of it yet again. Uh, let me see, toggle tails attribute, uh, toggle the blinking colon, shift colon, let's do that. Uh, oh, there it is, yeah. So the colon is either on or off, there we go. It's blinking colon, it's back on. And we can turn off the blinking colon, see? Right now the colon is stable. Now it's blinking, so we've got the blinking colon. Uh, thickness of the numbers, let's do that. Plus, you can make big fat digits. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> minus, minus, then we can make the digits thinner. So all these things that you can do by, by basically changing the way that this thing is looking and the way that it's operating on the fly. Military time. Uh, let me see, uh, toggles the location of date. There we go, up and uh, date, where's the date? Where's the date? D, oh, there we go, date. There we go. There's the date sitting at the top there, June 5th, 2018, Tuesday. Um, anyway, so that's D clock, D clock. So we've got our clock there. Do I still have the dolly clock running in the background? I'm, yes, I still have the dolly clock running in the background. And um, I think I want to show you one more before I run off and do some other thingies, okay? So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. one more. Okay, I have two more. I have two more. I'm going to lie. I, I lied. I have two more because I want to show you the sun clock. You know this. This there are like a million variations of this thing. Okay, it's all over the place on uh, your Linux system, and uh, this one is Sun Clock. Sun Clock, and uh, oh, that's teeny tiny. This is like microscopic, man. All right, let's expand this so that it's a little bit bigger. There we go. And basically, this is showing you what time it is at some other place on Earth, right? So what what time is it elsewhere? Well, this is the time that it is elsewhere. I'm gonna, I'm going to shrink the uh, D clock here. Um, I, I love clocks, by the way. I mean, I think they're great fun. And uh, like I said, I tend to have uh, the... Um, I, I love this timekeeper thing. I mean, I tend to have that on my desktop a lot. I come back to this one quite a bit. Let's go back to the clocks one more time. And I'm going to show you one last one. So all these are graphical in one way, shape, or form. Okay. Damon and I have seen the Dolly Clocks before, but never knew there was a name. There is a name, and you can download it, and you can install it. 
All right, here's the last one I'm gonna show you, all right? And for that, we need to open up a shell prompt. So we're gonna go in here, and I'm gonna go Q, and I'm gonna go to build, which is my, well, it's my, it's my build folder, all right? It's my build folder. So I'm gonna go to build. It's hard sitting on the floor, man. It's actually hard. And um, there is uh, something here called Clocky Walk. And uh, Clocky Walk is, um, I'll, I'll show you where you can get it in a moment, but I'm gonna show you what happens in it, okay? So I'm gonna go to, uh, in fact, I'm gonna go rm-rf and I'm gonna go Clocky Walk, because we're gonna do this like right from scratch, okay? So, so it's not here, it's not here. So pretend you don't see it, okay? It's not here. All right, so I'm gonna go tar-xzvf and I'm gonna go uh, tilde uh, download, whoops, capital D download, dude. Downloads, clocky walk, there it is, clocky walk, see? See, I just wanna show you how, you know, how to do this. Now, to the, the make, the build on this is, is frightfully, frightfully simple, okay? There's nothing to building this thing. Um, you can just type make. The only thing that's there, I know, I know, there are a couple of, uh, there are a couple of errors, but they're, they're just warnings, all right? They're just warnings, pay no attention to the warnings, okay? You need to have the curses library, the development library installed. And in this case, it was apt install, and obviously not end curses uh, dash dev, okay? So I had to install that one. So that was kind of the one thing that I had to do. But what's fun about this, what's fun about this is this, okay? You ready for this? Are you standing on the edge of your seat? Check it out. It's <laughs> it's an analog clock that's done entirely in text. It's an N curses analog clock. <laughs> oh, come on. This is cool. I love this. This is cool. Okay, I'm going to drink some more wine. I know, and you guys are sitting there going, seriously, does the guy not really do drugs? No, I don't. I just do wine and coffee. Ah, no psilocybin or anything like that here. Um, wine and coffee. Oh, and occasionally a single malt scotch. All right, occasionally a single malt scotch and the odd liqueur. Uh, as you can tell, it all comes down to alcohol in one way, shape, or form. All right, here we go. So there we go. That's Clocky Walk. And Clocky Walk, you can find, uh, let's go over to... Um, Let's go over to the website for Clocky Walk, okay? We can go Clocky Walk, which is actually S-O-O-M-K, whoops, sumka.com. And um, if you don't know what Sumka is, uh, go watch A Clockwork Orange. Uh, that's it. That's all I'm telling you. It's, or, or you can go up here and go, what is a Sumka, okay? I'm not going to do it because, you know, it's, it's uh, because children. <laughs> I'm not doing it for the children. That's that's my excuse today. But if you want to download it, if you want to download the, and, and obviously I've got Clocky Walk 0.3.1a. It's just it's just one of those things, you know. You throw a clock in a terminal window, and it actually works. It actually works. There you go. And that's all I'm going to say about clocks for today. All right. Oh, but what's in the wine, Stuart? What's in the wine is 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 wine. It's just wine. It, it, grapes. Do you remember, um, you must have watched, um, you know, before I move on to something else, uh, you guys must have watched um, uh, Planet of the Apes, right? Well, the third Planet of the Apes movie where uh, Zira and uh, company escape from the planet, and oddly enough, I think it's called Escape from the Planet of the Apes, um, one of the scientists decides or one of the government people decides to get Zira drunk so that uh, he can extract information from her. And he tells her that what she's drinking is grape juice plus... So basically, wine is just grape juice plus. All right? There you go. All right, I'm going to have another sip, and then we're going to move on. Um, okay. Now, the, the other thing that I was kind of hoping to tackle today, and um, I, sh I, should, I, should come up with some, I should come up with some documents uh, somewhere out there. Um, I'm sorry. So let's go with cd dot dot. And I'm going to copy a, uh, an example document file that I've got um, in my downloads. I happen to know example one dot docx. It's not mine. This is actually somebody else's uh, file. But I wanted to show, um, I, I was looking at it. I was trying to debug this thing for somebody. And um, that's right, Stuart, great juice plus. <laughs> G-R-P-A-E, funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
Anyway, so one of the things that um, that I've been working on with people is trying to do some um, ebook conversions, okay? And a docx file doesn't work on an ebook reader. Neither does a doc file. So if you've got a if you've got either a Kindle or you have a, um, a Kobo or, or a, a Nook, if you still have a Nook you know, lying around, or for that matter, if you want to view the document, if you want to be able to read your book or your book file in, um, in a, oh, 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 I'm going to insert a secret into this document, okay? I'm going to insert a secret. Feel free to share it with other people, but, um, but it's kind of a secret. So it's sitting in the middle of this video, and if you're in the middle of the, if you're actually watching this, after the fact or live, you'll know about it if you watch the whole thing through and listen carefully. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? All right, here it goes. Check this out, okay? Um, okay, see that? TheLonelyGod.com. Don't tell anyone. Actually, you can tell somebody else if you want. Uh, the, the requirements are, uh, the requirements are simple. You must read and leave me comments. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's the requirement. And I'm moving on. I'm moving on. See, I'm hiding it now. Shh, shh. Okay, thelonelygod.com. Anyway, so we're back in here. So basically, so I've got this document here, example one docx. And if I wanted to view that in an, e, you know, if I wanted to view that in a in a um, document, there are several ways I could do this. One of them is ebook. Um, is a product called Caliber. Caliber is an ebook reader. Uh, all around application and if you go to caliber uh, dot ebook uh, sorry caliber ebook uh, caliber ebook management there you go um, it's a way basically to manage all your different uh, ebook files and so forth and uh, it's caliber ebook.com caliber is cool because not only is it an ebook viewer in other words if you don't have a dedicated ebook reader and you want to view one of your books um, let me see if I can find one really, really quick here. Um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. What have I got in EPUB here? Um, let me open up another uh, tab here and find us an EPUB. You can tell this is live, can't you? This is, this is how you can tell this is live. <clears throat> LS star EPUB. No, uh, LS star slash star EPUB. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, downloads. Uh, oh my God, but there we go. There we go. So if I go back to this here and uh, I go ebook dash viewer, ebook dash viewer is the built in viewer that the caliber tool uses for you to read ebooks. Okay. And again, these can be Moby, these can be like Moby as in. Um, as in the Amazon uh, Kindle format or EPUB, which is, believe it or not, the standard, despite the fact that Amazon is the seven million pound gorilla of, uh, of this stuff, they are not the, the uh, standard. The standard is actually EPUB, uh, or at least as I understand it, it's EPUB. So let's go ebook viewer, and I'm gonna go tilde downloads. Um, oops, here I go again with capital letters, downloads the lonelygod.epub, and there you go. Now we've got an ebook that you can read um, directly with the reader. Now, the thing that is interesting is to generate an EPUB or to go from one document format to another requires various document format converters. And I've been looking at a whole pile of these and I've been playing with a whole pile of them. Caliber is cool because it's like a built-in tool that does absolutely all of these things. But Caliber also has some command line tools like ebook convert. So you can actually do a conversion from one file type onto another. So let's say I wanted to take this one um, and I want to take downloads, uh, that one there, and I want to make it into an EPUB, okay? So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go the same thing. Uh, and I'm going to call it a .mobi, which is a, a, um, an Amazon. There we go. Flattening CSS, remapping pont, blah, blah, blah. And removing fake margins. There you go, applying case. And suddenly, just like that, seconds later, seconds later, seconds later, we have an EPUB. It's a big document. <laughs> it's a whole book. There we go. So now we've got a, a, a file. So if I go file star dot um, there we go. I'm compressed version. This is this is a you know a um, Amazon Kindle format file ready to go. All right. Now there are other document uh, formatters that you can get. I mean, um, one of them actually comes, it doesn't come with it, but it's, uh, it works with um, 
uh, Libre Office or, um, or I guess Open Office. Open Office must still be around or something like that. And it's Uniconv. Um, and what it will do is it will convert, uh, we'll do an in, in between step because um, something like, um, like um, the uh, Caliber ebook conversion tool cannot convert directly from a uh, doc file, for instance. You have to convert it to something that's open, like an ODT file, in which case you would use Uniconv. Uniconv would allow you to convert from a doc file to, I don't have a doc file sitting right here at the moment. Actually, I do I have a docx up, up there, but um, the other, th so if I go, um, if I go, uh, ebook convert uh, let's go back to ebook convert for a second here oh. and I go ebook dash convert and I go example and I can go uh, let's call this one fish fish.epub and uh, it will do the same thing it will convert a document into some kind of an ebook format so if you've got an ebook reader or you're using an ebook reader somewhere or doing something with it this is actually a cool tool so what you can do is you can go and download caliber and uh, Caliber is interesting in the sense that you can download if you want. All right, let me go back over here. You can download if you want the uh, the one that's in the repository for your various distributions. But the problem with it is it tends to be old and it tends to be behind the time. So you're going to have to go over here and you're going to want, as you can see, it's available for a variety of different operating systems. Obviously, we care about this one here, the Linux one. And uh, if you go control C here um, and like you select this whole text and you go control C, it will install the full version directly, regardless of whether you're dealing with a, um, an RPM based distribution or a deb distribution or whatever. This doesn't care. It is, it is a completely portable version that will work on any distribution. So let me just show you what happens if you do that. So if I go over here and I paste that, you will download and install the latest version of Caliber. Whoops sudo dash v on oh, no, password <laughs> Shh. i'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna tell you my password oh there you go i do know my password yes and this is how we install the latest version of caliber which like i said if you want to just fire up the caliber tool or caliber in and of itself you just type caliber or you run it from actually let me close some of these clocks here let me close some of these clocks get a lot of clocks going here there you go. Caliber is installed. And like it says, um, you can just start Caliber by typing Caliber. And if you do that, you've got the full graphical tool, which I haven't been, obviously it's a new version that I haven't installed here. Uh, I'm going to say Kobo because I actually have a Kobo. And I'm going to say finish. And there you go. Caliber starting up. And there's the full graphical tool available for you. And you can convert books from here, but you can also do it from the command line which is what I was showing you there. There is one other one that I want to show you because I've been fighting with this. I've been fighting with a couple of document formats that I was trying to, um, that I was trying to do an easy, fast conversion. And I discovered this one as well, Pandoc. Pandoc is, in, whoops, Pandoc is interesting um, because it is a general, I mean, it says general markup converter, but it will convert from a whole pile of different formats, okay? So if I go Pandoc, dash o and i'm going to call it duck.epub no, sorry duck.mobi and uh, i'm going to do uh, the file that i had there actually let's do the um, let's do the duck.mobi and uh, i'm going to do the uh, example file that i had here and we'll just uh, let it do its magic here there we go and if we do an ls at this point we have a duck.mobi and if i go ebook dash viewer Oh, it didn't like Moby. Maybe it doesn't do Moby. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go duck.epub, shall we? Whoops. Let's do duck.epub. Typically, I do epub. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. Sorry, I jumped at this. This Here we go. I, I Duck.epub. There we go. That's better. All right, let's see how that works out. Yeah, that works better. All right. So if I go uh, ebook viewer duck.epub, and now I've got like a, I've got a, a full epub document that I can scroll through, I can read at my heart's content, upload to uh, Google Play Books or upload to my Kobo or my Nook or you know whatever device I want. But apparently it doesn't do Mobi, but it does a whole bunch of other document formats, and it's all built into the whole Pandoc engine. 
So that's kind of cool. Let's just, I'm just gonna try one other thing here, okay? Because I did do a Mobi file on the other one here. And I'm gonna do pandoc. Humor me, okay? Humor me just for a moment. Dash O, and I go tlg.epub, and I'm gonna see whether it converts from a Mobi file. All right, so I'm gonna take the, uh, uh, the Mobi file. It does not do Mobi. Interesting. So, so we're gonna need, now I know that ebook convert actually does it. So if I go to ebook convert, let's go back to ebook convert for a second here. Ebook convert will actually convert to a Mobi file. So it's got that going for it that Pandoc does not. I like the idea of Pandoc because it's a much smaller package. It's tinier, but obviously it doesn't like Amazon. <laughs> this is not an endorsement or a, a, a um, yeah, or me uh, saying anything derogatory about Amazon, especially since I spend a lot of money with them and have an Amazon Prime membership. This is also not an endorsement of Amazon Prime. I'm just saying. All right, so now if we go... If we go to, uh, let's go back to, um, and let's do, uh, what did I do a fish.mobi? I did fish.mobi. So let's do fish.mobi. So there you go. While I was uh, doing this with you guys, um, I, I have, um, there you go. So while I was doing this with you guys, I uh, found out that, uh, you know, the, it, it doesn't work well. So there you go. <sighs> All right. Um, whoops. Let's go back to this one here. And now, now, uh, now that we've done Caliber and all these other sorts of things, I want to do one other thing. George Powell, Time Machine. Ooh. Okay, that's enough for that. I want to do a Linux distribution you've never heard of. I want to do another Linux distribution you've never heard of. This one is called Gecko Linux. And you know what's funny? What's funny is, is I decided that since I'm doing this live, I'm going to be completely honest about it by, by doing it live. So we're going to go into my virtual machine manager. And uh, we are going to create a new machine running on Gecko Linux. Let's try this thing, shall we? All right. So, uh, actually, let's uh, minimize all this here. Okay. Let's minimize this. And we're going to say use ISO image. We're going to browse in the ISO folder. There's Gecko Linux. And uh, there are lots of different variations. Actually, let me open it back up here just to show you what it looks like. If you go to download, you're going to see, now this is built actually on the uh, OpenZUSA. It's an OpenZUSA spin, okay? Um, but of course, it's been changed and modified and it has some non-free stuff, which of course the, uh, you know, which of course usually requires that you install uh, or point to additional repositories and so forth. So they've taken care of those things uh, for you on there. If if those are the things you don't want to be bothered with and you'd like those things to be taken care of, they exist in there. But as I pointed out, uh, there are different desktop environments that you can go with. So I'm going to go with the, I went with the Cinnamon. I downloaded the Cinnamon version. It could have been any of these other desktops, but we're going to go with Cinnamon. So let's try it out, shall we? So we're going to go choose volume and then I'm going to say forward and uh, let's give this thing 2048. Uh, we've got lots of memory. We can go 4096 if we want. And we're going to give it an additional CPU. And I'm going to say forward. And we're going to give it 20 gigabytes. And we're going to call this one Gecko. Gecko. Isn't there some commercial for an insurance company? Felix! Felix, how you doing? Nice to have you on board. Well, given that it's based on... Um, given the uh, version of OpenZUSA, I would say that it's probably a rolling release. Although, uh, process uh, cannot allocate memory. Oh, all right. Well, let's go back. Let's go back. So I'm going to go 2048. Hmm. All right. Apparently, I can't allocate that much memory to it. Gecko. What? What? Okay. Okay. I did something somewhere along the way here. So let's 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 reopen that one up again, shall we? Forward. Use ISO image. Oh, cancel. Yeah, use ISO image, and we're going to go with Gecko Linux, and we're going to say choose volume, and um, blah, blah, and I'm going to still go 2048. That was 20 gigabytes, and we're going to call it Gecko again, and we're going to say finish. There we go. A little bit better. My fault for messing up with it, and... and uh, just for fun here, let's go uh, Gecko Linux. Shall we go to, uh, let's go with the um, the default here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full screen for us, okay? Um, 
Let's go full screen and have a look at what this looks like. Loading Linux kernel. I can have another sip of wine while this is happening. Please excuse me. And by the way, if you do have some wine out there, you know, please, by all means, you drink as well. I certainly would not want to, uh, you know, stop you from doing anything enjoyable like that. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Come to life. Come to life. Oh, there we go. Something happened for a brief instant, for one brief shining moment. I think we're, we're just running the live desktop at the moment. So we're just booting up on the live desktop as opposed to going directly straight to installation. So come on, Gecko. Come on, Gecko. Um, by the way, uh, while I'm waiting for the uh, screen to come back to life here, there we go. While I'm waiting for that, I would like to ask that if there is something you'd like me to cover, if there's a topic that's near and dear to your heart that you'd like me to chat about, um, please, by all means, let me know. And, um, you know, we'll try to do that for next time around or at least some other next time around. Some is familiar with video hardware acceleration. Well, that's that makes sense because we're actually running just in a virtual machine at the moment and we're running off the live CD. Um, we could go through the, uh, whoops, can go through the Calamari's installer and uh, start the install process there. Let's see if how different this is from the OpenZUSA install process. If you're familiar with the OpenZUSA one, of course. Um, welcome to Calamari's installer. Next, 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 uh, erase disk. Let's go with erase disk as then do the whole thing. Next. Uh, what is my name? I'm going to put Francois. Obviously, it's not my name. And I'm going to go um, Gecko. Gecko. Choose a password. I'm going to put a secret password, S-E-C-R-E-T. And I'm going to put um, S-E-C-R-E-T. And I know it's not a very safe password. But this is just a demo. This is just a demo. Next. And I'm going to say install now. Okay, let's let the installer happen while we take a look around at this thing, okay? While we take a look around this. So let's see what's in, what's, what's included in the uh, Cinnamon version of Gecko. Menu, applications, um, accessories. Uh, obviously, they're not going to include exactly the things that include in, that are included in the, um, in the uh, OpenSUSE distribution. Otherwise, what would be the point, right? Uh, internet, what are we using for a browser on internet? Firefox, Pigeon, Thunderbird, Transmission, very Gnomish. Of course, we're using Cinnamon Desktop, so there's going to be a bias toward that, obviously. Clementine for a um, music player. Um, Pulse Audio in the background, okay. Uh, firewall configuration. There we go. Okay, so let's minimize this for a second. Yes, I know it's running in minute. Uh, I, I see that. Thank you. Thank you. You can disappear now. And uh, let me minimize that by just coming down here. So there we go. So that is that is Gecko. That is Gecko with various desktop configurations. Unlike the, if you go to the OpenZUSA, of course, uh, you'll notice. Let me actually open up the browser here, and we'll go back to the Gecko desktop. Firefox, come to life, Firefox. Yes, I know I'm doing an installation in the background. Come to life, Firefox. Double click, double click distribution. Do you like single click or double click? I'm kind of used to, I'm kind of used to the uh, single click, um, despite the fact that I know that I often run into things that do double click at the moment. But, um, Firefox, come on, Firefox. Firefox is already running, but it's not responding. <laughs> That's not a good start. And uh, I know it's my fault because I have started a um, an installation, which means I'm killing this, this system at the moment. All right, so let's go. Uh, oh, there we go. Firefox is starting up. Thank you, Firefox. Uh, sure, uses my default browser. What other browser was there? Did you notice what other browser there was? We're going to say, sure, use it as my default browser. OpenZUSA.org. It opens us to OpenZUSA.org. Interesting. I would have thought it would take us to the Gecko Linux page, but we're going to OpenZUSA instead. Oops. I'll 
helps if I can spell Linux. Helps if I can spell Linux. Gecko Linux. Gecko Linux. Come on, Gecko Linux. I should have started the install, I know. But I wanted to see what the install looked like. And, um, you know, maybe you wanted to see what the install looked like. For detail-oriented geckos. Part of the polish, by the way, involves, you know, uh, like the, you know, better font control and stuff like that. It's one of the big things that they're uh, they're big on. OpenSUSE with a focus on polish. It is based um, on rolling. There we go. Uh, based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed Edition. So in answer to the question that Felix came up with out there, it is a rolling release. It is a rolling release. So you're you're dealing with the uh, with the bleeding edge if you're into that sort of thing. And I tend to be. I mean, I do uh, all sorts of terrible things to what should be considered my default desktop. Um, Gecko Linux installer. I'm not going to let it go through the entire thing because it's actually happening at the moment. But uh, there we go. That is another Linux distribution that you've never seen before. And um, what I did like about it, I'm going to go back up to, whoops, Control Alt. I was wondering why I couldn't get control of my desktop again. Uh, what I did like about it or what I found interesting about it was the fact that there were so many different desktop environments available. So they've created spins for whatever it is that you happen to like. Uh, whether you're an XFCE person or whether you like the, well, actually they don't have Budgie yet, which is which is kind of interesting. But um, but there is an awful lot of different desktop environments that they've uh, you know already pre-configured it for. So um, based on a 42 with periodic release and a long time support, looking for the rolling release. Let's go for the rolling release. So we've got looking for the static release. So we've got both. We're on the rolling release at the moment, and you can have the static release. So that answers the question: Is it based on rolling or static? It's based on both. It depends on which one you want. And I can't. Oh, and I downloaded the static as opposed to the rolling. There we go. Okay, so there's the rolling release. So I should have downloaded the rolling. So if I download the rolling at this point, just for fun. Um, yes, there it is. It's the rolling version. So it's got rolling in capital letters as opposed to static in capital letters. And um, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Lunchtime is almost over. So that means I have to wrap it up at the moment. I'm gonna say save file because I'll look at that as well. Um, but uh, I want to thank Linux Journal again for, uh, for uh, supporting the show and uh, for letting me uh, have fun here and drink wine every Tuesday. And uh, thanks to everyone who shows up live. I appreciate your input and your time. And honestly, honestly, if there's something you'd like me to cover, if there's a pet project of yours that you think needs to be, uh, you know, to be highlighted, please let me know. And, um, you know, I try to keep it light on here. I try to have fun with it. Um, but, you know, like I said, if there's something that you think is important, please let me know about it. Um, also, if you have not already done so, please go to youtube.com slash user. You don't have to do the slash user. You can go slash freethinker at large. That is my YouTube channel. And uh, you're going to notice if you haven't already subscribed, there will be a red subscribe button here. Apparently, I'm already subscribed. I'm logged in as myself here. But there will be a red subscribe button over here. So subs click the subscribe button. Share with friends, family, relatives, neighbors, your dog, your cat, your fish, your hamster, your enemies. I don't really care. Share. Let them know that it's out there. And, um, and uh, oh, one more thing on Linux Journal, just so that you know. They do uh, get a subscription. Get a subscription. If you don't want, you can become a Patreon or a Patron through Patreon. And uh, one of the cool things about doing that is uh, one of the um, one of the uh, price points, so to speak, on Patreon uh, gets you a subscription. So you can actually get a subscription as well. Like it will include a subscription of the magazine, monthly delivery of the magazine. So that is one way to do it. Or you can just straight subscribe. And if you happen to be out here, if you happen to be out here. You can do this one as well, Marcel Gagne, patreon.com slash Marcel Gagne. And uh, you can, uh, there we go, and you can uh, raise a glass. There you go, you know, uh, different price points there as well. But uh, you can become a supporter of uh, me as well if you want to. And I will put all the links to all these different things, to Sumka, to the various clocks and all this sort of stuff into the final YouTube video when it shows up a little bit later on today. And uh, I want to thank everybody for being there. The people who are live, uh, Stuart, Damon I, Sandy, Felix. Uh, thank you so much for being out there. And um, this will be available later on uh, for other people on, um, on YouTube. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Thanks for being here. And uh, let me see. I'm going to start closing things down here. And I'm going to wave bye-bye. Let me see. I'm going to go and wave bye-bye on UBS. On, oh, oh, there we go. There we go. See? See? I'm going to wave now. Transition. There we go. I'm waving. Thanks for being here. Talk to you later. Bye.